Good evening and welcome to Salt Bible Study. I am your uh, teacher for today, Pastor Frank Miller, youth pastor at Vernon Park Church of God. And I'm very honored to be with you today. Today we're going to explore in our lesson, uh, the title is The Creating Word Becomes Flesh. The Creating Word Becomes Flesh. And our scripture that we're going to explore is John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. And the aim of this lesson will be that we would want to explore the meaning of the word for the world, find true inspiration for life in Jesus, and live in relationship with Creator God because of the light that Jesus gives. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 14 reads, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Again, our lesson is entitled, The Creating Word Becomes Flesh. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this opportunity to open up your word, to see what it is that you have to say to us, O Lord. Reveal yourself to us in this word today, O Lord. Let us leave this uh, lesson with understanding of who you really are and how you work in our lives. Lord, we pray that you open up our hearts and open our ears so that we can receive what it is that you have to say to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The book of John is one of the four synoptic gospels, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Synoptic meaning that it gives a synopsis of the life of Jesus. But the book of John is very different from the other four, three books, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they all give sort of this earthly history of Jesus. They go into his birth and go into his teachings and his parables and all of these things that he's done in his life. John, on the other hand, doesn't do that. Um, what also is unique about John, when we look at Matthew, Mark, and Luke, a lot of the material is shared among the three, that a lot of things that are in the book of Matthew can be found in the book of Mark, and a lot of things that are in the book of uh, Luke are found in the book of Mark and Matthew. But in the book of John, 90% of what's in John is unique to John. That is not shared among the other books. It's a very unique book. So it lets us know that John has a very different message, a very special message that he wants to give to the reader. John does not go into any birth stories. John does not go into the baptism story, nor any temptation stories, parables, teachings. John is very unique. John wants to give the reader an understanding of who Jesus really is. That was what John was all about. He really wanted the reader to understand who Jesus really was. And we can find that and discover that because one of the words that John uses so often in his writings is the word truth. He uses the word truth over 25 times in this gospel alone. That he wants us to understand this idea of the truth. Another word that John uses in this uh, gospel is the word love. The word love can be found um, throughout all of John's writings over 80 times. As a matter of fact, uh, John um, does not even name himself in the book of, uh, in this gospel. He calls himself the one who Jesus loved, the, the beloved disciple. So the idea of truth and love are very important to John's message. But what's most important, I think, is this other word that he uses most often. He uses it over 100 times in this gospel. And it's the word believe. He uses it 100 times in this gospel alone. Because it's something that John wants 
the reader to understand. He wants to under, he wants the reader to understand this idea of believing, believing in who Jesus is. When we put these kind of major things together, we can kind of see what John's purpose for this book is. He really wants the reader to understand that he wants us to be, and convince us to believe the truth about who Jesus really is, the truth about who Jesus really is, so that we can have a loving relationship with Jesus. That's what John wants us to know. He wants us to believe who Jesus really is, because it's only when you believe who Jesus really is that you can really have a relationship with him. That's just like us in our lives. When you really know a person, when you really know the truth about a person, you are able to love them, love them in spite of who they are, love them uh, in spite of the truth of who they are. That's what real love is. And so that's what John wants us to know, that when we get, come into a real relationship with God, a real relationship with Jesus, it's because we really know who Jesus is. And not only do we know who he is, but we believe that he is what he says he is. And who is Jesus? Well, John tells us this in this verse chapter. He tells us that Jesus was the word. That's the first thing he wants us to understand, that Jesus was the word. In the beginning was the word. That's preexistent. That's was. In the beginning, that, that's before time existed, before function of the earth came and function of the heavens and earth came, the function of the human beings came. Um, John wanted us to know that in the beginning was the word. He says Jesus was the word. That's preexistent. But then he says that the word was with God. So not only he was there in the beginning, but the word was with God, meaning that he coexisted with God. So he preexisted. He is preexistent, existed before time. But he also was coexistent. That means he was there with God. But then John gives a very unique thing. He says, but then the word was God. He wants us to know that the word Jesus was God. That is God in human flesh. That Jesus is coexistent. He's fully human, his own person. He's the person of Jesus. Um, but he's also God in the flesh, that he's the manifestation of God in human flesh. God, Yahweh, the only true God, became flesh, became human. The creator became a part of his creation. Why? Motivated by love. That's what we learn in John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his son. That So, he lets us know that God, motivated by love, the one and true God, motivated by love, came and became human, fully human, in order to save us from sin and judgment. He says that Jesus is the word. Now, let's go deeper into this idea of the word. The word here is used is logos. It's, and in this standard meaning, logos means word, speech, or utterance, or message. And the unique way it's used in scripture is used to uh, signif uh, signify a special, a special revelation of God given to God's people. That it's a special revelation of God given to God's people. Here is he's saying that Jesus personifies the revelation of God, that Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. Now, very quickly, let's go deeper into it because it says in the beginning, you understand that phrase back in the book of Genesis, that in the beginning, God created. So what John is telling us here is that um, when God spoke, when God said, let there be light, and there was light. When God said, um, uh, let there be all of these things, the, 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 the word that activated all that was Jesus. Jesus was that creating power. That Jesus caused those things. It was Jesus who activated. That's why he says here that all things were made by him. That when God spoke, Jesus made. Why? Because Jesus is the word. Now, let's go even a little bit deeper. Because when we look at the word create, and back in the book of Genesis, that word create is the word bara. Now, word bara is only used in reference to God. Every time it's used in the Old Testament, is only used in reference to God, that only God 
can borrow. Now, we tend to think that that word create in our language, it means to um, make something out of nothing. Um, but there's a deeper understanding here that we can hit, that we can receive. Because in the ancient time, in the Old Testament time, the understanding of uh, when something came into being, something did not exist, something that was not considered to have existed unless it had a function, unless it had a role that it played in the earth, in the human life. So when, when things were described, when animals were described um, as existing, they, they were described based upon their function, not because of the human, not because of any type of material thing. They were, they, they were, they were considered to exist because of their function. And so um, when it says that God created, it does not necessarily mean that God created material things. We know that God does create material things. Um, but when you see that word bara in other places in scripture, it's not referring to material things. For example, Psalms 51. Psalm 51 says, create in me a clean heart. That's what David says to God, to create in me a clean heart. He's not asking God to give him a new physical heart. He's asking God to give him a new function, to give his heart a new function, his motivation, his mindset, a new function, new direction, newness. So when we see this idea of create here, it's giving something newness, function, to, to give it the, the role that it's supposed to play in life. So when God says, let there be light, God, Jesus creates that light, gives the light a function, gives the light a role to play in this human life. So what John wants us to understand here is that when we have Jesus, Jesus creates us. He, make, he gives us existence. He gives us life. He gives us purpose. He gives us newness so that we can function the way that he has purposed us to function. It's Jesus who gives the function because he's the creating word of God. So when God speaks, Jesus creates because Jesus is the word. But secondly, we find here that Jesus is the light. It says that Jesus uh, is the light and that, the, that, that John, John the Baptist, came to bear witness to that light. He said that Jesus is the light of the world and he gives us life. Now, when it talks about life, it, it does refer to both physical and spiritual life, but what 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 John is saying here is that Jesus was the embodiment of the fullness and quality of life that God offers to those who believe. The life that Jesus was to offer would be the light of all humanity. So what he's saying here, he says, when Jesus is the light, he gives life. That Jesus gives us life that we have we get some life out of our life. That's why he said, I'm come to give you life and that more abundantly. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's talking about eternal life because he could be talking about eternal life there as well. But he's saying, I'm here so that you can get some life out of your life. To get some function out of your life. So that you could be, have the quality of life that God gives. And the quality of life that God gives is only found through Jesus because Jesus is that word. He gives us life. He gives us existence. He gives us purpose. He gives us function because he is uh, that life. He is the word. So he's saying that Jesus is the word. He is the light. He is God in human flesh. He personifies God. He, he, he reveals God's character to us in this world. And that's what we need to understand when it comes to Jesus. G John wants us to know that in order to really know Jesus, we must understand that Jesus is God. Yes, it's hard to explain. Yes, he, he's fully God, but he's also fully human. And he's, he, 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 he's, Jesus was not just divine. He was not just uh, human, but he was both God and human. And that as the word of God, it was him who gives life. It was him who gives existence, which means that he gives us new function. He gives us newness. He gives us uh, uh, a role to play. That's why we can have life in him. We can get some life out of our life, eternal life, as well as some physical life, some new life, some newness out of our life, because Jesus is that one. 
And so that's my encouragement for you today to understand that Jesus was that creating word that became flesh so that we could see God's character in him. When Jesus lived on this earth, he showed us how to live because that he was showing us who God's character. He was showing us how to live our lives. And so we can have that same life that Jesus have when we receive him and take that new role and that new function that he's given us. So I pray that you receive Jesus today, that you understand that really know that he is God, that he became flesh and dwelt among us so that we can have life and life more abundantly. Let us pray, Lord. We thank you for being life to us. Thank you for being the light. Thank you for being the creating word that gives us function, that gives us life so that we can be everything that God has created us to be. And we will always thank you and praise you for who you are. So, and we will walk in this relationship, oh Lord, that you've given us and we will love you as you have loved us. And we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Walk in the light that God has given you, receiving and knowing who Jesus really is in you. God bless.